Okay. So everybody, everybody, I am now the live boat. Yes. This is the one I was in yesterday. You guys won't believe me. I have worked all day. But I swear I did. We get pop top chat going. Michelle Schulte, Jeremiah Dempsey, Rachel Powell, Robert White, Al Matra, Art Misty, Jazierski. Joy, wait, what was that one? Joyce Mes Mesetas, Mes Ma Maestas, Maest Maestas, Maestas. I think I did it right, Joyce. Welcome. I don't think I've seen your name before, but welcome. Head Static, good to see you again. Scott Coiner, Nick Mayer, Meyer Mayer. Blackcraft 27, you made it, you slid in. Uh, Robert White, Andy Ferguson, Blackcraft 27, Ron Sheps. Maestas, Maestas. I, I did say it right there towards the end, but thank you for helping me out. Uh, Nana Fran 62, you may not be the worst, John C. We'll see as time goes by. Shadow Jim 81, hello, I've not seen your name before. Welcome to a live. Uh, I just say hello to the first couple of folks on, like the first 30 or so. Stricken Ghoul, Starshine, Chad Smith, Afar with the Dawning. Um, I do very well this evening, thank you for asking. I don't think I've seen that name before. Now, I'm not always the one reading the comments, so it's quite possible you guys have been on before, but I don't get to see the names. I only see the first couple on. Uh, Ashley Russell, Donna Carmack. Shadow Jim, I, I, you've been here three times. Well, Shadow, it's very good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Leslie Painter, good evening. Brandon Ferretti, good to see you on. And John Sheffield, that's it. I'm calling it. Now, you're in the wife's hands. Wife is here to read comments. Next person is Monster Man Cave. Monster Man what Cave? A what a great name. name that is. I feel bad that I missed it. Too fast. I did. I stopped too soon. Great yeah. Okay. So now she's going to read comments. If you guys have any questions, of course, during the live feed, feel free to ask them, and my wife will read them to me. Um, we don't do a lot of nonsense here. We do. I mean, we're we're it's nonsense, but we're working. So, you know. James Whittle says only 358 days till Halloween. That's right. Is that all? You better get busy. I have, uh, you know, I'm busy for Christmas. We already have Christmas orders rolling in with crosses and elves. You see a lot of elves and stuff back there. Leslie Painter says your work is amazing. Hey, Robert White. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate that, Leslie. Jay Outdoor Adventures and JLR 538LM say hello. Uh, hello. Hello. I also want to say to anybody watching, if you have a YouTube channel where you do fun stuff that you think people will enjoy, I'm not the kind of person to, uh, to stop you all from sharing each other's info. Now, you can't post a link. Only my admins can post links. But you should be under the name of your YouTube channel while you're there. So. Cheers. Coffee plus. I have Coke Zero regular. No plus. Make an undead Santa. I do not. I make an inbred Santa um, because it's cold up there in the north. Um, I make an inbred Santa. I do not do an undead Santa. A couple other people do that, but I had not seen one that was an inbred, so I did that. Play in the inbred card. I decided to wait a little later tonight. There was some news happening. And I let that news happen so that no one had to um, 
well, you would have missed me. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Yes, so I waited until after. And I knew that people were interested to see this get finished up. Here are our broken Christmas ornaments that we made last night. Was that last night? That was last night. That was last night, yes. And then here is a face that we're going to go into. We're going to go into its face. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Can't wait to see the glittery icicles on Jack Frost. Well, you see, this one is not going to get that because this one is getting the broken ornaments in his face. Now, I will be doing a Jack Frost coming up here soon. Um, so Jack Frost will be another Jack Frost will be happening. He's actually right there, if you look. That's another Jack, same. But this one is a special request. Are the edges still pretty sharp on the ornaments? Um... Uh, um, what a tough question. Technically, yes, but uh, they don't hurt because it's it's a real thin plastic. So, yes, they're sharp, but they are not strong. Okay. And I have to kind of come up with a bit of a plan here as far as how these attached. Um, that is going to be the tricky part. Horror Beauty. Yes, I will see, but looking forward to seeing how you attach the ornaments to the face. Me too. Ron <laughs> Trips, are we getting a focused Alan tonight? Uh, I'm fairly focused, yes. I've been working all day, so I, I'm pretty focused. Um, I've actually done a lot of electrical work today. I put a new, new light up in the other room over Shannon's uh, shipping station. And I added a big light and a switch and an outlet on the back porch of the shop for nighttime spraying down and stuff. Weird Kid says he looks awesome. Michelle Schulte was just wondering the possible uses and thank you. Jekyll and Hyde Creation says hello. Uh, Ashley hello. MP. Hi guys, I'm making stuff tonight. Cutting, weeding, and heat pressing shirts for my daughter's dance school. My fingers were already. Chad Smith says his nose reminds him of a bomb pop. Me too. Yeah, I know bomb pops. Um, so I know I'm going to cut some of these flat so that they glue on and they look like they're going in. I'm just figuring out which ones and where these go. John C. says, I hope you have a good selling season ahead to finish the year successfully. Thank you, John. Uh, that's very kind of you. Thank and you. And what a year it's been. Yes. Oh, well, it's November. <laughs> No, it's not November, silly white. Oh, wow. Mm, 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 mm. Grabbing some contact cement. Yes, it'll probably get three. I think four is going to be too much for the real estate that I have. Weird kids. I'm going to try to go to Transworld this year, and I hope to meet you and Shannon might be there with the trio. Come on, buddy. I'll see you there. If you need an invite to get to Transworld, let me know. But uh, because of your show and interviews, you might be able to get a media access also. If you have any trouble, let me know. Josh Newman says hello. Uh, hello, Josh Newman. Hello to everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Saturday night. I can see there's 91 of you. That's a little cray-cray. All right, so I've picked this one to go on. Now, I know to up his Christmas factor, he's going to need to have a hat. So the hat is going to come right around here, right? So three Christmas bulbs have to happen below this line. Michelle Schulte just sent us a ten dollar super chat, and you should tell them about what you made on the channel. The PayPal donate. Oh, okay. Yes. While you're doing um, that, I gotta check something real quick. 
I greatly appreciate the super chats. I really do. Um, someone, someone brought it up, and um, I was able to put on my YouTube page a PayPal donate button because some people didn't want to give it through super chat. Um, so if you go to my channel on the header on my channel, there is a um, there's a little PayPal P up there on the right. That is a PayPal donate button in case you guys want to um, give. Super chat is fine. Also, it shows up right now. You would have to tell me if you know. If, well, I'll know, but I won't know like right away. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. That's a, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's be honest, that's uncomfortable. I need to show that this is broken, and I need to show that it is stuck in the face. Um, and I think, see how I flattened those? And I flattened those. The cover. Well, do you mean the extension? Do you mean the extension for the Pache? Uh, I'm very carefully sizing this up so that I can glue this down and it looks jagged and sharp. I don't want there to be any possibility of going into the eye. Uh, Amanda, uh, it is a, a 7 8 inch clear tubing from Home Depot. It is 7 8 inch clear tubing from Home Depot is what that is made of. It's this right here. It wasn't necessarily clear the whole, I mean, it's not black. It, um... It's not black, it's just that one is stained from a lot of ink. Um, and I think that this right here is going to be the SKU number for it. You can write that down, 714565. Hold on, let me put on my glasses, which I remembered to have. And Lanny Williams sent me a cool glasses holder so I can just wear them around my neck like a pro. Uh, 714565. 714565. And I think that's the skew for this uh, 7 8 clear tubing from Home Depot. And I think I bought 10 foot of it, and uh, that will do a lot of airbrushes because you need like an inch and a half tops. Okay, so that's that. Darillium? I'm, I'm so glad that you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I think what's funny, I do have to clean my glasses. <laughs> I put them on, it got foggy in the room. Uh, I think what, um, I think what's fun about, one of the things that's fun about my channel is I'm a pretty calm guy. Like, I'm not a loud person. I don't do a lot of shouting and craziness. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with monsters, which is exciting. And uh, having monsters... Look at this glass. See, I like it because it's stiff, but it's not. It's pretty nice. Pink color in the mold by you. No, I don't know. Okay. Greetings from Scotland. Oh, hello, Scotland. We have a couple. Unless I'm sugared up on tin tams. That's true. If taken care of, how many pulls can you get from a pottery number one mold before it starts losing detail? Okay, pottery plaster number one is kind of one of the weakest ones. So you'll, you'll probably lose, I hate to say this, a little bit of detail on that first pull. But it depends on your sculpture, you know. If it's tree bark or something, yes, you're going to lose detail pretty quick. If it's a smooth human face, then you'll, you'll get five or six pulls. Um, in Ultra Cal, you get 10 beautiful, 10 good, and 20 meh pulls. Um, in, and then it's just bad. Um, in Pottery number one, it's probably 555. Five, five. Um, good, 5 bad, 
but maybe you'll get more than five. It depends on your sculpture and how smooth it is. Okay, behind me by the reel. You know where all the stuff is in the shop. That's what's fun. Oh, oh, you know what? Yes. Okay, this mold here. This is my old. It's for my sculpting bus. This is silicone. This is silicone, and this is a mother mold, and that is for my sculpting bus. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, uh, one of the fun things that happens because I'm on YouTube so much is every now and then people will send my dog a present, my dog's presents. And someone, I'm not going to say who, but they're awesome, um, sent them a treat that I had never heard of called Chunola. It's called Chunola. And uh, it looks delicious, kind of like a peanut butter bar. I have not tried one yet. Um, but they last a while, and that's why I like them. So, yes. I have a very attentive houndos right now. <laughs> Sit. Chaney. Cheney, Cheney, Bella, what's your name? Cheney. Okay, good boy. Boris, sit. Bella. Very gentle. Roscoe. Your name's not Roscoe, your name is Boris. You can have it. That's fine. And now they'll be good for a while. About 15 minutes. Uh, Chunolas are awesome. I assume they're delicious. Your kid says, I there are going to be some paint mixtures to buy on the website soon. <laughs> yes, soon. Uh, we're probably going to work on them uh, this week coming up. Thank you, Leslie. Leslie Pedro says, beautiful dogs. Uh, they are beautiful dogs. Normally I transfer from the big gallon of contact cement into a smaller container. I didn't want to make you guys wait on that. So, again, I did cut this. I'm going <laughs> to just contact cement. Brandon said he was expecting you to taste the tuna one. Well, I understand. <laughs> And I, I, I debated it. I, I tricked Novi into eating a dog biscuit. Okay, so now I have contact cement on this piece and on this piece. And the blood that I'm going to put on here is also made of glue. So while this will be a pretty thin bond, um, I actually think that it's going to hold up fine because the blood that I have coming out of here is also going to be glue. That is one. This is one. All right, now let's look at two. Let's see where two is. I had thought about making little cuts it into the latex mask and then putting those inside and folding it over. Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't like this hard plastic up against an actor's face, so, so that's not going to happen that way. Chunka City says, is that going to break off if you're not careful? Um, well, we're going to find that out together. Like, you know, I'm going to, once I get it on there, I'm going to test it and see how it goes. Uh, I also have the advantage of the contact cement actually eats, it eats away this plastic. Uh, like this is the same, this is like solo cup plastic, just about. Uh, so it, it, uh, 
it's, it has a corrosive effect on it. I think that I'll actually be in good shape because I'll get a little bit of a flat edge where it melts it. And that'll give me a little more glue. Very Another question, if I may. I was debating on making some Primo polymer clay. Set them in my sculpt to create a cavity and then remove them from the mold and then glue them back into the cavity. My question is, what should I keep an eye on? How much shrinkage should I expect? Um, the Primo clay won't, the, um, but the latex will. The latex is going to shrink between about 8% and it's between 8% and 15%. Um, if it dries slow, then if it dries slow, that's actually better because it'll shrink less. But um, it's also latex, so it's also going to stretch. So most of the time, you don't have any issue with socket degradation because it's going to flex just about as much as... Now see, this one I'm going to do a little bit different. This one I'm going to twist over and I'm going to make myself a flat spot to glue it down. Brandon Frey says, when my wife and I first moved in together, she was introduced to her first human who enjoyed milk bone dog biscuits, so you are not alone now. Hooray. Brian Breen, I love it. That's sweet. What did you use for the main part of the mask? Okay, so this is actually, um, it's a latex mask that I made. Um, that's, I mean, I sculpted it, I molded it, this is latex. So now in addition I have little flat spots that I uh, am increasing. The, the glue is all about surface area. The glue is all about surface area. So if I can increase the surface area with which I have to glue it down, and I'm in better shape. Hey, Mike Murphy. Chongo City says, can you make latex? Um, okay, so the, the short answer is yes. The long and actually actual answer is no. Latex is sap from a rubber tree. Could you grow your own rubber tree, <laughs> tap it, tap that tree just like maple syrup, and then reap the rewards of all of your latex. Um, I guess that's technically possible. Um, it, nor it prefers to grow in a uh, tropical climate, so you're gonna have that kind of working against you a little bit, depending. Brian Green says, I make stuff, but not that awesome. Uh, I'm well, maybe you just haven't been making it as long as I have, because I've been making stuff a very long time. So maybe I have more practice. Yeah. I think that the more of you you put in your art, I think that that is, that's just going to be a wonderful thing. John C., who is our resident botany expert says most river tree plantations are in Malaysia. <laughs> yes. John C., you always have good uh, tidbits of... And we were... Info, which I love. We were... Um, latex is also, it's a commodity. So what, what happens is when I order a barrel of latex, it's like a barrel of oil. Uh, the price fluctuates. So I have to call and find out how much for a barrel of oil, for a barrel of latex, and then I get the price of that commodity, and then I can pay for it. It's not like you just order it. You have to find out the price of the commodity because that's how that works. Brian Green, I do a big haunt here in St. Catharines, Ontario. We were awesome. In Ontario. Uh, we did. We were in Guelph. I see that. We were in Guelph. Reptile cosplays. That would look great as a green goblin mask or a demented Christmas elf. You should, well, this, it is kind of an elf, kind of. Thanks. I have an elf over there that would be an even better green goblin. I swear it to be true. Chunko 
kind of a city says. What brand of latex do you use? Uh, so, what type do I use? I use casting latex. That is the type of latex that I use. Um, brand, um, brand is a, it, it's a hard thing to say, simply because a, a lot of it comes from the same kind of factory, but they will mix it to your specs, so some places have it mixed a little bit differently. Um, so, the brand, I guess, that I prefer is, uh, I buy a lot from Binnie Mold Supply. I also buy from Black Lagoon. Um, I also buy from Fright Props. So I also buy from Screenline Studios. So you can get latex from a lot of places. Uh, Monster Makers in Ohio has it. See, now what I'm doing is I'm folding over some of these ends. Instead of cutting them off, I'm folding them over. And that's giving me flat spots in order to glue to this. John C. says, Nike Shoes makes their soles on the site of a plantation. <clears throat> Weird Kid says, don't you? Black Lagoon, isn't it? Yes, I also order from Black Lagoon. Uh, let's see. Uh, for Cal Cosplay says, we'd love to see it. I will spin it around here in a moment. Chad Smith, are you going to do any kind of latex buildup around the edges of ornaments swelling at punctures? Uh, probably not. And the reason why is because that is what makes uh, these kinds of insertion things look fake. Because you have no choice but to do that in a makeup. And in a mask, I don't have to do that, so I'm not going to. Um, does that make any sense? I would have to do a buildup on a makeup, you know, to hold the stuff in and whatnot. But on a mask, I might not have to. So let's see how it goes, and let's see if, because uh, I'm going to do some strength testing. But don't forget, the, the blood that's going to be coming out of here is also glue. So it is going to help also. So I guess am I going to do any buildup? Yes, but it's just going to be glue. Glue. Several syllables in the league. Michael Lester? This is the one that was just cut. Um, but it's also in the spot that I think is going to move the least. Uh, contact cement is just amazing. Um, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm moving that, you know. And I have enough contact, it's, it's holding well. Uh, I feel, and it also has enough movement to where it can brush on stuff. Now, if you run face first through camo net, almost no matter what, you, if you catch it on camo net, you're going to probably rip it off. But that's, that's how life works. So can you make an undead Santa? Uh, I guess I could. Uh, I think there's other folks who do an undead Santa. You're obsessed with undead Santa. It's the same person. Shadow Jim, anyone? Uh, uh, I could do an Undead Santa. Uh, Chad Smith says, yeah, that makes sense. Abdiel Von Grave says, hello, and great job on that mask. Hello, Von Grave. Hello. Are you going to make hands or destroy the mills? Uh, I did not have any hand plans for this guy. I had no hand plans. Um, this, is, this is normally a Jack Frost. This is kind of a weird order. This is normally a Jack Frost mask, and I can tell I have a little more bite with this one because I do have those flat pieces. Um, this is no, this is normal. This is my Jack Frost sculpt that they requested ornaments in its face, and they requested it to be uh, painted like an elf's paint scheme. Um, and I'm still going to put the beard on, but I wanted to get the glass in his face first, and I also have a couple other. I'm not just doing the ornaments, I'm doing a couple broken pieces of ornament that look like they're stuck in also in some spots. So Have you turned off your notifications? I don't know. <laughs> and my I have enough contact cement on them that it doesn't want to do anything. So I'm just shaking the phone like crazy. Right, Demon. Hello. How many gallons of contact cement do you go through a year? Oh, I don't know, maybe 15. Wow, 
Why contact cement and not the silicone? Uh, because contact cement is an adhesive, and um, the silicone is uh, its adhesion is mostly through the act of it creates a vacuum, so it's not as strong of a adhesive as contact cement. Contact cement is a really strong adhesive. It are good. And this is the third of them. Flat um, piece. Chef says, I have some masks from Spirit that I want to foam fill. Should I glue eyeballs in before or after filling? Uh, depends on the foam you're using, but normally I say after. Normally I say after. Shadow Jim says the mask looks great. And Brian Brain says you would love my setup. Enigma says hello. I'm sure that I would. I like things that are cool. And I, I like the, uh, the, when I put a tab on it, like that, I put a little tab on there, and now I'll, I'll glue that down. Ron says that he'll be using Loctite foam to fill it up. Oh, they, yeah, just do it, do it after. He'll be fine doing it after. And I can just position the tab so that it's kind of hidden from view. is having a, a decent day. A lot of change in the world right now, but uh, not here. We're, uh, we're still just hanging out making monsters. Brian Demon says, are you able to clean up your chip brushes or is always garbage after you use the cement? I normally throw them... Well, okay, so this, this chip brush, you said cement. This chip brush will dry out. It'll get hard, but if I put it back in contact cement, it'll soften right up because the contact cement it will reactivate this contact cement. Even after this is hard, this is a hard brush. Yeah, that's contact cement. And if I just put it in here for a while, uh, remind me, I'll come back to that and I'll show you that it got soft again. The little cans, normally I'll shove a whole brush down inside of it when I close it, so I've got one. Uh, Ken Smallwood, I refuse to say hello to your fiancé, Deb. It would be ridiculous of me to say hello to your fiancé, Deb. Fiancé, Deb, you should be, well, just, hi. How's it going? Hope it's going well. Of course I will say hello. What a, what a small cost. Okay, so now I've put glue spots for two more. I just gotta find two more. Oh, look, there's one. I'm just using the pliers, folding over the edge. I'm on the edge, the edge of the broken heart. I'm on the edge. Uh, so normally Jack Frost gets a, um, normally Jack Frost has a blue hat with uh, snowflakes and stuff on it, but this one uh, will have the an elf hat, which is a red and uh, green moy Christmassy hat. Did you say hi to Ken's fiance, Debbie? No, I did not say hi to Debbie. Ken Smallwood's fiance, Debs, he'd like you to say hello to him. That, that'll, that'll cost $7.99. He's a monster camp student. I, I already did. I did it while you were in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm messing with white squash. Did you read uh, Brian Breen about the, his donations to homeless? No. He, uh, they do donations for a homeless uh, 
Health Center and made 264 and a bunch of food this Halloween. That is awesome. Shadow Jim says, or do you do foam masks? Uh, I have done foam masks, and I make foam latex prosthetics. Uh, I'll probably do a video on foam latex prosthetics at some point. Uh, however, I haven't done one recently simply because um, that's really specialized, and I have learned that the real specialized stuff that I do, um, people don't like. <laughs> or at least fewer people are interested. So YouTube is like, well, we're not going to show that to people. Blackcraft 37 asks, is the contact cement you use stronger than a two-part epoxy? Uh, well, that's a great question. And that is a great question because uh, two-part epoxy isn't really flexible. So um, this will stick on when the epoxy will break. It's not necessarily stronger, but this is smart enough to flex with the latex. Not smart enough, but this is able to flex with the latex. So um, is it stronger? No. Will it work better? Yes. And also, epoxy, its real adhesive strength is that it becomes something really solid and hard. It has a real high durometer to it. So it goes on and, uh, you know, it holds on to itself. And that's really good for holding over like a break or a rip or something. Um, contact cement is really good about bonding two flat surfaces together. Probably boring you guys with glue talk. Or do you like to know what kind of hat Jack is going to get? Uh, I mentioned that he's going to get an elf hat, which is a red and green number. Ken Smallwood, Monster Camp Seven. What's the best way to make resin eyes? Um, well, uh, honestly, Ken Banks at Ken's Tools has a resin eye making kit, um, and you can't go wrong, man. Like that's the way to do it. And banks, Re uh, resin, I resin making, resin eye making kit, eye resin making kit, a kit to make resin eyes. Let me say it that way. Okay. Hey, Susan Atai. Hello, Susan Atai. Brian Green, what's your most favorite mask you have ever made? The next one I make. I get that question a lot, and it's always the same answer. Uh, how sad would my life be if, oh, the favorite thing I ever made was nine years ago. Um, that's a bunch of crud. Who wants to live that way? Uh, the next thing I make is what I'm excited about. I'm excited to make the next thing. I, am, I have joy in my heart to be able to make monsters again, uh, over and over. So, yes, the next thing I get to make is my favorite. I have a goblin that I sculpted, and I haven't even molded it yet, but I want to. And as soon as I get to mold it, I'm going to be really excited to paint it up, because even though it's a goblin, I'm going to give it the same goblin paint job I've given a bunch of others. It's a new sculpt. It's a new thing. Hello, Jones. Jones! Father Donza says, never boring, always learning stuff. Brian Green says, so true, same as my haunted house I do. HBM Emporium. Hi, I'm new to this channel. Let me see what you can do. Okay, just hang out and watch. I got, I'm doing it. Dance, monkey, dance. I live to serve. Okay. What's happening is now I'm grabbing a little bit of paint and the ones that have tabs. I'm going to mix up a little bit of skin tone color so that uh, I can just paint, because you can see the tab where it folds over, and I want to paint that. So it matches in with the skin a little better. HBM Emporium Shop. I love the word Emporium. Uh, I don't, I'm going to admit that I don't really know. I know like they use the word emporium in stores. Does it just mean like fancy store? 
Is that what it means? I also own a monster museum, and I owned the museum for three or four years before I could spell the word museum consistently. So I'm not a smart person. Be aware of that. Yes, Stacy is always excited to see Josie. All right. So, like on these tabs, if you look, see that where it's folded over? I'm just going to hit that with some of this paint. It'll take a couple layers, but see, that's going to go away. We actually, my haunted house was not open. I had a quiet Halloween at home with the wife, which I have actually never had before. So it was, it was good that I was able to do that. I've never done it before. And it was something, I had to kind of get through this Halloween. Yeah, this Halloween made me a little sad, uh, but I worked on it and uh, it, it worked out. So uh, we're, here we are making stuff, we got through it. And all we can do is work on making next Halloween better. I think I'm caught up. Yes. Uh that would that would be too much, I think. There's too much on that mask at that point. Did you get KNT Halloween? I did not see them. Were they are they, they on? Hello all. Wow, Alan, that's a pretty cool one I thought. Sorry, I just finished up work. Uh, we're going to get there. Uh, we're getting there, k &T. It is looking really good. Um, I waited to go live later today because there was a lot of news happening. And I, people wanted to see that news, and I wanted to make sure that they could. Uh, and to get, to get to see me both. Not that you know, I'm no competition for that big news, but um, at least uh, I waited. Did you read Justin Williams? What did you do for Halloween? I did. Al Matro looking cool. Okay, Nick Meyer, did you ever get a chance to finish the giant worm? Uh, no, no, we were halted mid-project on that. Uh, I'm hoping I can go back in here this month and uh, pull him out of the mold because he's all poured up. I just got to pull him out of the mold and foam him and, and get him built. Brian Green said they had a 300 people this year. That's cool. Lucas 77 saying hello from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. We have a lot of Brazilians on now. Yeah, it's awesome. Monty Freak, do you have a Discord? Uh, I do not have a Discord. Uh, I'm old. I have a Facebook group. <laughs> uh, we have a Facebook group where uh, I can see your guys' pictures and I can see stuff that you make. You guys get to see what I make all the time, but I want to see what you guys make. So that's why we did the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I may eventually have a Discord. Um, it's, it's a matter of whether or not I can con my buddy Stacy into running it. KNT do Halloween, no problem at all. I knew it would look awesome either way. Uh, Justin Williams, 100% cannot wait. We usually set up a mini haunted house in our yard. It's so fun. People came this year and were disappointed we didn't have it up. Well, I, what a what a crazy year for this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, you, you have to be aware. And uh, if you made a call because you were worried about social distancing, that's fine. Good that you're trying to protect people. Okay, I don't think a haunt should be over 20 minutes long, and there have actually just been some actual studies on this. Uh, you get a little desensitized after 20 minutes or so. Uh, so how many rooms? Uh, I think that a person could experience, um, depending upon how the room is set up, a room between every one minute, and one minute or 30 seconds. So 
if you're looking at a haunted house in let's say themed areas instead of rooms because you can do a lot with a hallway in all honesty so let's say um, in a haunted house that you want to last 20 minutes you could have 40 themed areas and uh, I, that's you know going through it 30 seconds a pop you know some a little bit faster some a little less if you think about it you can actually walk a long way in 30 seconds so you have to do some stuff to slow some folks down. Extra twisty turnies and all that kind of stuff. And I think I have to put a piece like over in one of his ears too. Like he's been stabbed up in that ear. John C. Sorry. Okay. Are you eventually going to show work on the dinosaur lower jaw in the yard? Yes. Yes. I just have actual work. Like that's a, that's a bonus Allen thing. And uh, the only upside to me getting that finished is that it gets to leave my yard. So. Brian Breen, it's a blast. I got a video on my YouTube of the walkthrough. That's awesome. Hey, 1980, it says I can now check rebuilding an RV door off of my bucket list. Sweet. Misty Jezereski, for our first haunted house only open for three hours a day, two days a week, for three weeks. We had 624 people. Everyone hopes this will be a yearly thing. That is awesome. Brian that Green sounds says like fun of Hey, HBM Emporium Shop, building a mobile app, a fun house theme, using isometric drawing in the Monument Valley 2. Uh, cool. Skin bones. Hey, Alan Hobbs and wife just got home, but I could catch the rest of the show. Glad we could have you on. Justin Williams, what is your favorite haunted house around DFW other than the Reindeer Man has a cool environment, usually go over here. Yeah, I'm going to say reindeer because they're they're good friends of mine. Uh, but you know what? We have a lot of good haunted houses around here. Okay, so this guy is just going to hang out. Well, and I would like to know. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to add in, I'm going to add these guys back into those ornaments to really sell them like ornaments. Ron asks, why don't you refer to haunts as scare attractions? Uh, well, they do in the UK, and I actually think that that's a way better term. Because uh, every now and then I'll get like paranormal people who come to my YouTube channel, and then they're upset that I'm not dealing with haunted houses. Uh, I'm dealing with commercial haunted attractions, and uh, yes, you're right. Uh, we should call them scare attractions, like they do in the UK. That is something that I really like about the way the UK has done things. But you, the UK is just older. I mean, they're, they're, they've been around longer. I understand the land is the same amount of years old. Um, and yes, there were people here before, but the buildings and the civilization and stuff, um, there's more history there that we know because they haven't like wiped out the history of the land and then like, hey, let's restart. Um, so they have more haunted places. So they had to specify uh, early on the difference between a scare attraction and a haunted house. That was a very long-winded thing for me to say. Celeste Kitty says hello. Brian Green says, my setup takes a month and is only open for Halloween and no charge for the water. That's great. Cobra Commander says that is a good mask. And Art Lady Blunster, hello, Edie, says hello. Uh, hello, Edie Blunster. Tim Smallwood, I started using great stuff to level my mask molds. Just one of those little tricks I picked up at Monster Camp. It does help, and it weighs a lot less than making them flat with plaster. Ken made a vampire mask at Monster Camp. Yes. Fantastic. Killer. Killer. And... That's also something that you can do to molds you've had forever, you know? It doesn't matter if it's not a new mold. Go back and add a, a cap of it, of spray foam, in order to uh, make it level, make hey, it pour Amy up easier. Hey, Watkins, Monster Camp 6. Hooray. Hey, Amy. Amy made a Frankenstein mask that was... Very cool. Classic and beautiful. You guys have seen the Monster Camp pictures from Monster Camp 6, which was the September camp. Amy made the Frankenstein, and it was gorgeous. 1980 says, oh, broken ornaments. That's what those are. Yes. 
See, once you put this in, it's easier to tell that they're ornaments. They're ornaments. There will be a lot of red. Because there's, there will be blood. Justin Williams, what is your Facebook group name? We'd like to follow it. Hang on, Justin, I'll put the link up. Shannon's going to put a link up. It is uh, Still Feast Live Creepers. It's one of those things where I think I tell enough people, but I'm not very good at that stuff. Okay, so what I have done now is I like the little tab approach so much that I have made a little fold over tab. And I'm going to add that onto the biggest part of the inside of um, the one that I only glued on. You know what I mean? This one, I'm going to go ahead and add a tab inside of there. Because I can, and I think that'll work well. And it's just reinforcement. With, with glue, it's all about surface area. It's all about the more surface area you have to glue together, the stronger your glue bond is going to be. Or if you says that creepy corn mask is still, uh, I still think of it. And Chonga City, thank you for respecting our rules. We're not talking any politics here. Hooray! Thanks for the reminder. Jeremiah Dempsey, can you please can you split a piece of the ornament and put it on the rim of the ear so it looks like it's pierced all the way through? Uh, I could, but the back. Um, I'm gonna. I have a piece ready to go on this ear. All right. I have a piece ready to go on the ear. I'm not gonna do a piece on the back of it because it would just be hard to see, and it it, it would cause some. I think it could get caught in hair and stuff. So I'm gonna be very careful with that. Gregory Haynes, hey, this just got in from playing a neighborhood garage band. Wow. Cool. Had a great night. Headstag. Since you have pieces around the mouth, would you maybe put a hanger in the lip like a lip ring? So it looks like it broke and got stuck in the lip. Um, I think that would be a little forced. I get where you're going with it. I feel like that would be a little forced. Captain Mojo. People complain to you about not being able to discern between a haunted house and a house with a paranormal site. Also, a lot of paranormal sites are also commercial businesses, as in the Borden, Borden Salem House or Salem. Uh, correct. But yes, they do complain to you. They do. Yes, they do. Uh, Just, I know. I know several thumbs down that I've gotten on my YouTube channel was because, you know, one of my tags I always use is haunted houses, and they were looking for paranormal haunted houses. But I have to use that tag because here in the states, that's what we call them. Justin Williams says that he got a question to get on the group. He's new. He oh, uh, I always test the heat gun on my hand, which you should <laughs> never do. There you go, Justin. Chonka City, great job as always on your mask. That rubber is getting some good use. Uh, yes. Ken Smallwood, uh, my fiance Deb just signed up for Still Peace Live Creepers. Excellent. Well, very cool, Deb. Hello, Francisco Munoz. Monty Freight says, don't forget that brush. I won't. Uh, Kevin and Mojo says, do you get complaints in person? Was it a Karen? Did she speak to your manager? <laughs> uh, just, it's okay. So look look at this now. See how soft and supple this brush is now after just being in there? Like now it's, it's flexible. This is a regular flexible brush um, because it reactivated it. No, no, uh, um, no. Uh, I do get some Facebook people who try to befriend me because my profile says haunted houses, and I'm like, ah, it's not that kind of haunted house, and then they're disappointed, but that's okay. Paranormal people are kind of weird. Susan Atai, with the red Christmas ornaments on it, it really brings out the awesome painting of the mask. I love how cold it looks. Well, thank you. Reptile Cosplays, the haunted house at work 
and is also a historical haunted sanatorium. And the name of the building is the Waverly Hills Sanator Sanitarium. Yep. And a lot of people know about it because of how haunted it is. Yep. It's a good one. I knows about it. Enigma. Hey, Alan. If I add glycerin to any water play like EM210, will I get a wet play effect? Is glycerin the only thing that makes it more special than other water play? That's the only thing. That's, that's the only difference. That is the only difference. Um, I will often, instead of smoothing out my sculpture with uh, water, I'll use hand lotion. And the lanolin and the oils and the hand lotion do the same thing that the glycerin does in the wet. Uh, I don't slush. Uh, there's some inherent issues with slush casting. It doesn't mean don't do it. It, it. just That's not the way that I do things. And I've encountered some problems when I had to do it in the past. Uh, so I use a technique called dwelling. I will fill the mold all the way up and then I let it sit for a couple hours, uh, normally two hours, and then I pour it out. And whatever sticks to the side, that determines the thickness. How long it's in there and the moisture in the air is what determines how much moisture it sucks out of the latex. That's what makes the thickness of the skin. So two hours gets me a pretty good thickness. Reptile Cosplay says, and as a fun actor and a paranormal investigator, the haunted house tag does not bother me, so you have some people on your side. That's, that's true. You are correct. So. 177 people are watching. Holy moly, there's a lot of you watching me glue fake glass to a fake face. Mixing up another little bit of a color here. Uh, this color that I put on, it's a little dark. Uh, because I mixed it till it was perfect, and then latex paint tends to dry a little darker, and almost every color does that. So I just lighten this a little bit. Now I'm going to go over this anyway, but I want those tabs to have the best possible chance to be camouflaged. Angel Martinez says, I watch you all the time. Thank you, Angel Martinez. Can you move the camera a little bit? How's that, wife? That's good. Hey, Michael. He says, I was cleaning my work area, sit down, and and as soon as I was done, I accidentally kicked my chair and broke my pinky toe. Wow, that's awesome. Great job. Very effective. Two out of ten. Would not recommend. Captain Mojo, is it correct to assume that the higher the humidity, the longer you have to leave the latex in the mold? You are correct. And you know what? And temperature also has a bit of a factor because if it's cold out, latex don't want to do nothing. So it just moves slower, so it moves into the plaster slower. broken ornaments all over this guy and uh, I'm gonna grab a heat gun so I can dry him uh, dry up all this little bit of paint so I can add some blood which will further glue it in but wait I want to do a beard is the beard would, would the beard be too much will the beard take away KNT what do you think you think he should have the regular elf beard or do you think that uh, he does not need a beard. Uh, the beard is not necessary to hide anything. I think the blood's going to do that. But if I'm going to add a beard, then I want to make sure that um, if I add the beard, I want to make sure that I blood after I add the beard so that that reacts together the right way. Uh, I was I was kind of thinking that too. I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you. So I'm gonna get the heat gun. I'll dry this. Then we'll be blood. She's got a mixer. That's fine. It's already dead. I can tell. I did. I snuck it in on you. <laughs> John 
down and all they said, get him a soul patch. Oh. No one likes a soul patch, John. So the tabs being painted over really does help hide them. How what? How often is it not hot? Turns out it's always hot. But I gotta keep checking, you know? That's, that's like asking someone, listen, that's like asking somebody, how often were you hit by a car crossing the street? You still ought to look both ways, guys. Still got to check the heat gun with your hand to make sure, yeah, it's hot. I am staying pretty far back because I don't believe in low power on a heat gun. Going for a long time too. Um, it's possible. Rodolfo or Ordinez. I hope I said that right. Sir. Hi, how are you doing today? I just finished watching the dollar store robot head that you made. Loved it. We'll be trying. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Glad you liked it. Uh, that was a fun one. I've been making those for years. And I did a Facebook Live video while I was making them once. Um, and that was like three or four years ago. But I hadn't made it into a YouTube Wednesday, so I finally did a, a YouTube Wednesday on it. Okay, I think I feel good about that. When you go to this, suggest piercings and ear notes. Captain Mojo says, Brick Code and Skull is second. Only your Brick Rack. Yeah, Brick Rack had a champion skull. Ken Smallwood, are you adding icicles to the ears and nose? I, I, I do not. I think that's going to be what they call a hat on a hat situation. Uh, it, it would be too much. Like, we're going to let the feature of this mask be the ornament in the face, you know? Um, you know, you, you, you can go crazy and say, and he's got horns, and then each time you add something, you're kind of decreasing the value of the, whatever you want the feature to be. I'm going to let this broken glass be the focal point, and I don't want to detract from that visually by adding too much onto it. Chonka City says that looks so good. And Ron Bryan says, I love the Dollar Tree. It is a store of shapes. It is. It is indeed. So we're going to go on a field trip while I go get a hat. There you go. I'm going upstairs. But first, we're going to see Jonesy. Jonesy Cat. 
Jonesy Cat does whatever a Jonesy Cat does. Jones. Jones. Okay, boy. All right. Oh, I thought I saw a face in that window. Ha ha! I got your candy, sucker. I'm gonna eat it. I just jacked the baby Ruth from the wife. Leftover Halloween candy for the win. Uh, yeah, there's some masks in here. Okay. We're going upstairs, kids. Next time you'll listen. There we go. This one. Because the green won't be red on red on red on red. Gargoyle. Awesome fridge magnet. Awesome. Um, they came from cobwebs and candlesticks. <laughs> okay. Oh, facing the wrong direction. I'm like, why isn't the mask in frame? How many masks do you think you should have made? Oh. So I've made probably 2,500 like different sculpted molded masks. And then I've probably done easily a thousand um, build up masks, like, uh, like scarecrow masks and whatnot. Um, like the one, the contact cement mask that I did a video on a while back. And then copies of molds. I don't know, 10,000 masks, something like that, is my guess. Can you watch Ken says she had a storage space? Whimsical Griffin is getting motion sick. Sorry, Whimsical. And a uh, happy mojo. Sharon reminds me of a very underrated pet hunting fantasy horror film. Uh, I enjoyed that film. Uh, that's a good one. I actually own it. Ken Zarish, Stairway to Mask Head. Elvin Mulder, hi. Hi everyone, Alan. What would you use for a mold wall when plastering using monster clay for a sculpt? Wet clay makes a mess in my studio. Um, well, you can actually you can use a shim technique. Um, if you so way back, I did a video, and I think it's called Lobster Boy with Sound. Ridiculous name. I wasn't very good at YouTube back then. Look up Lobster Boy, or mask full process and um, yeah 
I, I use uh, playing cards, but I use they have a type of play, they have a, a, like a plastic playing card for playing cards in a by a swimming pool. So you can use those plastic cards and make a shim wall instead of a clay wall. Scott Pointer, how many thousands of clamps do you have in the mats? Just one. I don't know. I might have a hundred, but I have a lot. Probably you know between eighty and a hundred. They die, like they have a lifespan. Okay, so I have this much haunt sauce left, which is about that much. No way I'm gonna use that much, but I do want to tint this a little bit darker so that it's not, but see, it's a different type of red. So I think, okay, let's, let's look. Whimsical Griffin says, guess what? I'm opening, it, opening a gallery in a couple of weeks. Congratulations. That's cool. Awesome. It's a gallery gift shop. That's outstanding. Congratulations. That's great. That's a nice dark blood. I think that that's going to work well. <laughs> Edie Bluncer says, my grandson spilled a perfectly good glass of tea on my keyboard. Now it doesn't work. So howdy. Um, howdy. You'll find out which key is sticky. Oh, in the Lord. Great. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a little leery of great stuff because of how long it takes to cure when it's built up any kind of thickness. That's why I prefer the Loctite foam. It tends to, to cure thoroughly all the way through faster. Michael says, did you use playing cards in the lobster video? Yes. I did indeed. He says, all the keys work the cue. <laughs> I have made about 20 different silicone masks. Um, if you actually go to my YouTube channel, one of the very first videos I ever posted was a silicone Wolfman mask that I made uh, 12 years ago. So I've already had my silicone phase and I ended my silicone phase. And now if you want an awesome silicone mask, all you have to do is ask me and I'll recommend Immortal or CFX because both those guys are awesome. Or O'Neill effects. He's awesome too. Have you ever integrated a voice processor box with the mask? Yes. Um, actually, I'm working with VFX Studios, uh, and I've been hounding them forever in order to get, they used to have a minion unit, and I've been working with them forever. Um, actually, I did a werewolf for Psycho Axeman a while back, and I ended up getting a voice box unit. But anyway, this is a Minion sound actor sound system that I put with some of my stilt costumes. I just happened to have this box here. Since you asked that question, I'll show you. Um, once, once their production is smooth and all, I'll probably be selling these on my website, but uh, you can also get them on their website. This is the Minion effects system. And uh, it's cool that you asked that. It's got a chest harness and a speaker, and then it's got a remote that triggers all the sounds. So you can wear it, and maybe someone else is doing the sound, or you can just put this in your glove. I put it inside of the thumb. It's inside the thumb of the glove, and then through the fabric, you can press the different buttons with just fingers by pushing your fingers together. So, yeah. And it's got a headset, and it's got voice modulation, but it also has triggerable sounds, which is really nice. Uh, the noise you're hearing in the background is my dog. They don't give a crap that I'm trying to do a YouTube, and he is chewing on a water bottle. And it makes him happy, so I'm not going to stop him. I'll just be louder. Yeah. The other one is chewing up a different plastic container, and Jella, Bella is jealously trying to steal the bottle away from Cheney. 
because that's what she does. They were made of broken ornaments. Uh, I got plastic ornaments, and I actually have them for eyes and stuff. They make great eyes. And then um, I cut it up very carefully and painted it, obviously, from the inside. So there you go. Uh, interesting. No, this is Rip City Effects. Rip City font sauce. Rip City Effects. I like their stuff. I actually use a lot of it. Mike Chesnowski says, what was your inventory? I, I'll need more information. Nerd. James, Well, very cool. That's so awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. Um, no, because a silicone mask talk costs about five or six hundred bucks to make. Uh, my first one costed me over two thousand, but back then there was nowhere near the information that's out now. Uh, now it probably only cost you five or six hundred dollars, and you can buy one for five or six hundred dollars. And I hate to say this, but they're probably a better sculptor than you because they're better sculptors than me for sure. So. I just don't see the need to make them. I was on a quest at one point in time to um, bring a $150 silicone mask to the market. In the work that I was doing, like that's about the cost of materials. Like I was paying, um, you know, that much for just the silicone. So I, I, I was not able to do that. It, it was not a practical thing. I wanted to bring the cost down. I wanted them to be cheaper. Um, did not work out. Because they just really cost that much. No one's gouging you. It's not, you know, it's not that, uh, that they're greedy and they're keeping technology to themselves. No, it's just that silicone is dang expensive. And they're as good or better at making silicone masks than me. So why wouldn't I have them do it for the same amount of money? Ken Smallwood, would a latex mask be damaged being mailed in an envelope instead of a box? The mask is fairly good. Some people say yes, and some people say no. Will it be deformed? Yes. Can you reform it good as new? Uh, some say yes. Is there a target time when you'll have the voice processor on your site? Um, no. Like, the world is so nuts right now. Um, that's going to be... And I'm having a hard time getting this bottle to work. I don't know if you guys are noticing that. Let's do some stabbing. Can you finish on um, the, the world is a little crazy right now. It's crazy right now. Uh, so, no, I don't know right now. Uh, they had a hard time getting them in. I think they have found and solved their supplier issues that they ran into with the COVID. Um, that did affect, you know, business and, and, and things getting done and getting shipped and all that. So, hopefully that's behind them. And I will probably hit them up this week, if not tomorrow. And, uh, and see where we're at. And if, if we're where I want to be, I'll probably set up with them and add them to the site soon, pre-Christmas. William Clarius, wouldn't Jack Frost's blood be blue? Um, 
Not if you want people to know that it's blood right away. So there's, you have to wonder how much work you're going to make your audience do. And sometimes um, they're more than willing to do all of the work. But I, I think people expect blood to be red. And you would have to explain to some people that, oh, well, his blood is blue. You know, and I think as soon as you have to do that explaining, you know, you've lost them a little bit. It's like having to explain a joke. So yeah, I, I would think that his blood might be blue, but like polar bears don't have blue blood, and they're cold weather animals. Uh, well, I, I actually spoke with him a lot on it. Uh, I did not watch every episode of it yet. I don't watch a lot of TV or YouTube or whatever. Uh, I just don't. Um, but I have seen, I saw the first one. Um, I haven't seen it pulled out. And uh, he's, I don't know which episode he's on as of yet. After COVID, do you plan on attending any conventions? Absolutely. I love haunted house conventions. Paul and Lenore. Lenore, yes. Can you use black lagoon latex for separating your paint and tinting? Black with latex for separating your paint and tinting. You mean to make paint for latex masks? Yes, you can. I think that was my problem. Let's see if I just fixed my problem. Oh, now we're cooking with gas. Yes. I fixed my blood problems. I hate it when I have blood problems. And uh, this haunt sauce, it, it is a blood, fake blood that I like a lot. Um, I've used it several times. Oh, see over on this side, one of the things that's happening really nice is that the uh, the blood has pooled inside of this a little bit. And that's cool, that's something that would happen. I think that's kind of neat. How long will it take that blood to dry? Uh, this weather, maybe 20 minutes. Hopefully they will make a nice polyurethane rubber for masks to make a cheaper silicone alternative. Well, I mean, there are cheaper uh, silicone alternatives. Um, it's just they're never as good as silicone. Okay, back to the black lagoon latex for separating your paint and tinting. Uh, I meant for your one third, one third, and one third combination. Of course, yes, you can use it for, for making the paint. Yes, you can. says immortal masks are very open about their mask making process. They are, and they're open about it because it's it's hard. It, it's a difficult process to do, and you probably can't sculpt as good as them. Um, I can't sculpt as good as them. Uh, I have to be super innovative so that I can hang, you know, and I can get people to come to my booth and buy something when they have something at their booth. And how do I do that? I don't make the same stuff as them. I make different things. Now, let's get his uh, hat full of on him. Lurchy, Lurchy, says it's YouTube Saturday. Lurchy, uh, <laughs> I do live videos a lot. So, uh, I'm on live a lot. It's the recorded videos are almost always on a Wednesday. Let's distress this a bit. Please. K and T, do you mind if I stress this a bit? I'm going to hit with some nicotine spray just to grime it up a little. Lisa says it had to be red to make the red tips for you. Chonka City, do you have a mask for the masks? I do. Just one, because Texas is hot. Right. And silicone is like wearing a plastic bag on your head. Right, Demon says, 
says, is that blood dry and still look wet? Yes. Hey, Madeline. It says, happy November. It's good to see you back. Happy November. Good to see you on. Good yes, see indeed. You back, Madeline. How did you fix your blood problem? Oh, I, my, remember I said the blood was a glue? Well, it glued effectively inside the bottle. Had to pull a big nub out of it. Thank you. So you, were, you answered how long it would take the hot sauce to dry. Yes. Hey, T says, go for it. T says, you don't even have to ask. Hey, Michael, thank you. The phone battery is real low. I'm going to check. Thanks for the charge for dental check back. Did you show them what it is you're using? Uh, no. I'm using movie paint nicotine spray because it's pretty translucent and it just gives me a nice bit of age on this. And I think elves would have dingy balls oh, at the end of their hat there. I don't think it would have a clean ball on the end of his hat. When in doubt, dingify your balls, folks. Right. Well, I'm just saying. Oh. It's for monster can't, elves. You can't, you can't scold people. I'm not scolding any. What, no, what did no, I do? No, on the feet. I'm clearly discussing if elf balls. Say like this. I'm clearly discussing elf balls. Are, are you having fun? Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm 11 years old. This is my life. I did. I completely. See, here we go. Hard beauty. Alan, don't scold someone else's balls. This is what you get. I wasn't scolding the balls. I'm dingifying the balls. These were very bright balls. Yeah, pretty good, isn't it? it? Does smell good. It smells. It smells like a show. It's not like when you walk into a small haunted house and that smell of latex. And yeah. Stuff, and you're like, oh man. It smells like happy. Okay. I don't know what you guys are issue is. I was clearly discussing. Elf balls um, on the end of their hat. They want to see the can of, this, of the paint again. Again, okay. Yep. Luckily, I didn't put it away. It's movie paint nicotine spray. This is exactly what you Google movie paint nicotine spray. Specialty paint products for the entertainment industry. Any elf balls made by Alan are guaranteed to be distressed, am I yeah. right? Why wouldn't you want distressed balls? Thank you, Rob. Rob says monetization was good while it lasted. Yes, it was. So, like, this is a knife that I got from uh, Halloween City or Spirit, one of those. And uh, just the nicotine spray on it. You know, I use this on the bear. I, I, I showed you guys this already when I did the bear. It's just nice. Look at that dinge it gave. You know, and on metal, you can kind of... clean off the blade so now you know it looks a little sharper because the blade is cleaner than the body. Sure are a lot of ball comments right now. Yeah. Um, I blame Michael Lasseter. Lots of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry wife. I don't have to see all the comments. I don't I don't see them all. No, so Okay. Uh, so now, what I want to do is I actually want to give a little bit of gloss to his face because his face is a little flat, and I want it to have a little bit of the luster of life. Um, and for the record, that was the only uh, only the first application of blood. No. 
what I can do is I can put the seam on the side because this is one that has front and back. But there's a tag and the tag was in the back. So we can do it this way. And now the seam is on the side. And that is perfectly fine. Michelle says, do you have your next YouTube Wednesday planned out? Or are you going with a Christmas thing? Uh, this, this next one will not be Christmas. This next one will not be Christmas. But then the one after that probably will be. Are you going to make a turkey mask? I, I will not make a turkey mask. I, I did think about making a roast chicken mask at one point. But then I was, I was shown apparently on Friends there was a turkey mask. And apparently also in Grand Theft Auto, you can have a turkey over your head. But I saw someone's mask and just their paint job made it look like a delicious roast turkey. And I had the idea to make a roast turkey mask. But I haven't. So I can do other things. What's that, love? You want to decorate a turkey? Yes, I will decorate a turkey on Thanksgiving Day. I'm going to get set up, and I'm going to... Awesome. This belongs to K&T Halloween. It does. K&T do Halloween. This is your baby. Do you watch Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving? I do not. I do not. Um, sometimes I feel that my life is, my time is too precious to watch trauma horror movies. But I have trauma, to be trauma. trauma, trauma. trauma. Yeah. I know where they are. It's one in a row. It's infuriating how well I can see with glasses on. Like, it makes me angry that glasses work so well. So I used to just do this with my eyes, like all by myself. But you, you ask a lot of your eyes. You work in very dark areas, so it's strange. Face works in dark areas. Hey, Captain Marga. <laughs> she says, thank goodness for fair improv training. I can safely take a drink while it's listening to conversations about elf appendages. Yeah. That's right. Edie says, I so understand about the glasses. So frustrating. Okay. And this makes everything a little bit glossy, and that's okay. Uh, no, I'm using um, Liquitex uh, high gloss varnish. <laughs> Ron says I've been wearing glasses for 35 of my 42. No sympathy. I hear you. William Clarius, how about a creepy Santa and a dead reindeer for Christmas? Uh, I do those. I have those already. Those are those are sellable items, my friend. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. This is one of the things that I installed today, was a light out here for the back porch. So now it's not as dark as it normally is out here for y'all. 
I came to check these L's. Not dry. These guys are not dry yet. Okay. I was hoping these elves that I based out earlier would be dry, but it is a cool autumn evening, so they're taking a while. See, I put a I put a switch in with a drip loop. That extra cable is a drip loop. If you're doing like outside haunts and stuff, drip loops are important. So if you extend your cable as far as you can and it just plugs in, well, what happens is rain or water or dew will collect on that cable travel down to your plug. You put a loop in the cord and what happens is the dew and water or whatever runs down the cord down the loop and it falls off at the bottom of the loop. It doesn't go right into the outlet. So drip loops are important for anything outdoor. That's technically under a roof but still I thought it was a good idea. Okay, and you know what? It's okay that they're not dry because, oh my gosh, my dogs. Okay, I'm trying to go through the door and the dog's just pushing up against the tripod. We did get the uh, Jack Frost done this evening. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I actually, uh, I'll probably reapply blood here uh, tomorrow, let it run down the same tracks and he'll be ready on Monday. That's great. I'm going to put his hat with him. He gets a green hat so it does not clash. And, oh, I did tell someone that I would show them the masks that make a better green goblin. I think those are it. But I'm going to call off for the night. It's 10 o'clock. Um, busy day. Lots going on. And uh, I'm going to chill. Been in the shop for a while. Um, Y'all are great. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. There's 191 of you on right now. Um, what, what, they dry fine outside. I only, I sprayed about seven or eight o'clock. So, um, they, they'll dry fine. Would, a, would fans help? Would a dehumidify? Sure, of course. Yes. Um, but I mean, let's just relax. It's okay. Let them dry. They'll be dry tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll paint them all up. And, uh, tomorrow I'll probably go live and I will paint I will paint beard, I will paint and hair at least a six pack of elves. Yeah, paint a tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is paint a palooza. I have crompuses to do, I have I have work to do. So you guys are great. Thanks for hanging out. You're awesome. Uh, wife say good night. Good night. And good night. Go make stuff. <laughs>